This demonstration shows how to draw the pattern for a tetrahedron. It's a very simple object. It's the simplest geometric form that you can make out of uh, regular polygons uh, that are also considered one of the platonic solids. The tetrahedron has four triangles in it. So I'm going to be using these tools, a straight edge, a pencil, and a compass. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just draw a sketch of what I'm creating, the pattern, and the object. But the object is so simple, it actually is kind of hard to draw because of the viewpoint that you have for it. But there is an equilateral triangle, followed by another equilateral triangle, and finally one last equilateral triangle behind it, or in probably in the case of your video, maybe on the bottom of it or on the side of it. So the pattern for this can be laid out in this arrangement. There are four equilateral triangles in a row, or it can be drawn out like this. They're identical except depending on which way you work, you know, where the slopes go this direction or the slopes go that way. Either way, I need four triangles in a row. I don't need to do any kind of perpendicular lines at all for this demonstration, so what I'm first going to do is determine how big can I fit on the paper. It's always something that you have to consider in a pattern. So with four of these triangles in a row, if I were to go with, say, that top pattern, I'd start from this side, say one, two, three, I think I have room for four about that big. Um, if I go the other way, start from the left side, one, two, three, and four. So first thing I'm going to do is draw a straight line. And then I'm going to set my compass to the desired dimension for my triangles. You only have to set that one time, and then you can build your entire pattern. I also have to account for where tabs go in this design, so I will sketch that out here as well on both of these. So this triangle will attach here, that triangle will attach there, and finally this triangle attaches there. Same thing applies to this one. Here, here, and that one coming around to there. So I'll need a total of three tabs because if I count the number of edges, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six tabs. There's always one tab sharing two sides or two edges, so there would be a total of half that many uh, or three tabs. So I can put a tab here or here, here or here, and here or here. All right, so if I first determine that this is enough room to build my, uh, my shape, I will use this dimension. I'm going to try it out. So I'm putting a, a prick right there with my compass and it's visible, I hope, from the camera. I can see it here. The, the compass fits right into there. I make a mark here and one above what I think is the midpoint here. I move over to the right. Crisscross, I've made my first equilateral triangle here, like that. And I need to make another one here. So I'm going to guess at approximately where I think it, it needs an arc and cross it at the bottom. Then I move to the next point here and I make it cross there. And I've now made three of the equilateral triangles. One, two, three, and I need only one more. And I need to figure out how to get there and I can do it in two different ways. I could mark down here, which then I can use as a point to find the cross point there. But if I don't have enough room on the paper, or I drew the line short because I knew I needed to not draw it very long, I can simply go to this point, make sure it's accurately aligned, and cross there. Looks like I barely reached where I should have predicted it. So um, I've already made little pin pricks here. So when I drag the compass, watch how it snaps into the hole. Found it. It just finds it and locates. That way you can always repeat. And now I've made a little cleaner hash mark there. So I'm finished with the compass, and now I just need to use the straight edge to draw. Now, in all of my demonstrations so far, I've been using this straight edge to do everything. It's kind of long, and sometimes it's a good idea to just have a littler one around. This is long enough to do everything. It's a little easier to do these shorter lines. So I'm going to use 
this straight edge now. So just as I would normally do, I'm using my pencil to find a point and pivot the straight edge and draw a line across. Now I just have to draw a bunch of these diagonals. There's one. Two, three. And what I've drawn so far is the line across the bottom. Actually, it's this version. Bottom, top, that one, that one, that one. I have these two remaining, which I can do. See how using a smaller straight edge is actually a little easier. It is definitely worth having a, a variety of ruler sizes or straight edge sizes. This one is a ruler, but I never use the numbers on it. But, uh, you know, unless I was needing to have numbers. So I've made all of my triangles, and I'm going to use an eraser to just remove the extraneous marks, which I don't need. Just make it that much easier to know exactly what I'm working with. It also makes it neater when you're gluing stuff together. Okay, so now, like I said before, I need to put in tabs. I need a total of uh, uh, four, uh, three tabs, sorry, So because there are six edges and things share. So the ones that share are the two top ones. So if I put a tab here, that accounts for there. I could put one here, and or I could put it here. It doesn't really matter, but watch this just as a way of remembering how you can do it. I could put one here and then one there, and they're all grouped together, wrapped around that edge. That just makes it easier for you to remember what happens and where it goes. But when I'm drawing a pattern, usually what I do is draw arrows that show where things connect so I know for sure I'm doing it the way it should be done. And I know this is how it gets arranged, but let's see if we could see it happening in a sketch here. Okay, I'm gonna draw this triangle first, the lower, the, the one that I'll call the floor of it or whatever. So. That is that triangle. And I'm going to draw it actually in perspective, so I'll start over. Not that it looks much different. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to label these. That'll make it easier. Call this one. I'll just label them one, two, three, and four. So this one is two. Okay, um, I think I drew it backwards. I'm going to do this again. And now you see why I like erasers so much. Um, I'm going to draw a straight line across there, put it in that kind of perspective view. This is two. Okay. Now, uh, attached to two is one. So one is this one that's sort of coming up. It's not attached yet, but there is one. Three is coming up like, uh, like that. And then four is attached to three on this edge. So I'm going to put four kind of like that and it's going to close down. So this edge and this edge are going to attach to each other. That edge is going to attach down here and this edge is going to attach over there. So I can see it starting to fold. I'm going to try to draw that again to see it a little more closed up. So I'm going to sketch a little lighter first so I can erase some stuff. Then this one is starting to close in more so is that one and finally this one is really starting to close in like that erase some extraneous marks and then i'll draw it a little heavier and see that we can see it closing up so i'll turn this around and see if it makes more sense for you that way this is the floor. That is number one. This is number, oh, this is number one. That's number two. This one's number three. And this is number four. Assembling. In conclusion, you can see how the pattern is done. Four in a row. Makes it pretty easy to do.